Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have with me Randy Janelle today. She got referred to me by um, I can't, Christy Catlett, I believe, who's having the Starseed Conference August 1st. Um, and Randy channels an interdimensional being named Virla, a voice for the new earth and the evolution of consciousness. Randy hosts monthly channeled workshops on a variety of topics as well as channeling gatherings so that you have an opportunity to channel your expanded guidance. She facilitates earth heart healing, a community of online and in-person seekers committed to growth and exploration and service. This includes morning meditations, breath work, brain enhancing exercises, book studies, yoga, and other movement practices, shamanic journey, and more. And for more information, you can go to her website, which is liminalyoga.com. And, and I'd like to give her a big warm welcome to the show. Randy, thanks so much for coming on for the first I'm time. I'm well, how Robert. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, you know, uh, technical difficulties, but, you know, uh, we, from here. Part of life. <laughs> but uh, that seems to happen a lot. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, so how did you get started in all this? Like what what what, what was like your awakening point? Oh, you um, it's a pretty funny story. Do we have some time? Yeah. <laughs> we do have the time. This is the time to tell our stories. So I um. I was busy. I was actually working on a novel and I was doing a lot of art, poetry, uh, photography at a photography business. And then I had put out, I had released my novel and released it on Halloween in 2015. And then at Christmas in 2015, we did what we love to do here in Asheville, which is a pretty woo woo part of the world um, where we were looking at our astrology charts. And I thought, thought it was super important for me to have my birth. It is super important for me to have my birth time. Correct. But it was, I thought it was, you know, I was like, is it eight, is it eight 30 AM? And I was really sticking on that half an hour window. And somebody there said, just ask a pendulum when you were born. I mean, your body knows when you were born. And that's actually the first time that I had had an interaction with the pendulum. And that pendulum was swinging. <laughs> So it, so long story short, I started with a pendulum and I just started asking questions, you know, and established the yes or no. And then this the vocabulary just kept increasing. We did circles, we did um, all kinds of things and, until it was just like, stop with a pendulum, you can channel and went from uh, writing. And, and it only really was a process of four, four to six months before I was verbally channeling. So um, I hadn't, I had listened to channels growing up, um, but I had never channeled myself until 20, 2016, early 2016. And just took off from there. Wow. That's interesting. So how did you connect with this interdimensional being? Like, is it, um, do you feel like you've always been connected to it in a way, or do you feel yeah. like, um, yeah. yeah. So when I first started, like in the pendulum days, I started uh, channeling a lot of guides, which I understand them to be the evolved Anunnaki. I know Anunnaki can be a little like a little hair raising for people, but the way that it felt at the time was, um, I, I, forgive me for this reference, but if we were to, if we were to kind of channel um germany let's say you know we we could say okay nazi germany was a very very challenging time right and so are we gonna just always think that germany was always this way because of this brief time in their in their history so even with the anunnaki and as much as maybe bad press as they get what i was channeling was an evolved version a healed version an integrated version of the anunnaki and so there was a lot of this like learn from us energy um, I channeled a whole host of guides back then. And then it's interesting. I did a lot of personal work. I kind of stepped aside from the channeling and did a lot of work on myself. And what a, what came through is, is Verla is essentially my evolved being as well. It's my expanded self. And I learned that I'm, I hail, this is my first, as, as many of us star seeds experience, this is my first human life. So first time on earth and where we come from as a soul is uh, as another universe so there's a lot, a, a lot that we offer with Verla. And, and so I say we instead of she or her or they, you know, I, I do attribute Verla as being a part of an expansion of me. So yes, always with me. It, it just, it was really a process of me gaining the confidence to be able to speak um, and own that and claim that, which I, I help others to do. I feel like that's an important part of the process is just going, yes, this is me. Um, and as a conscious channel, especially getting out of the way of any doubts and fears and limitations. So that information is more clear. More clear. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, um, 
is it ever a different like because i know a lot of times when i try to do psychic work it's like my ego gets involved or like mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. um do, do you just have to like let that go and let whatever comes through come through or how does that work or it do is, you go into like a trance channel or what it is a beautiful messy process <laughs> as human life is so uh yeah early days it's interesting back in the pendulum days my third eye did have to expand so, uh, you know, and there's, it was probably decalcifying all these things that you can do um, through the more yoga practice, more breath work, the more all of these tricks and tools that I used. Uh, but I, when I first started channeling, I could feel a, a slight headache here, you know, almost just like if something was pushing up against behind my eyes. But, but I had so much energy. I could do it for hours. It was just this little side effect. And after, you know, it's been some years. And so I don't experience that anymore because I've had to do my own process of opening. Um, and then it's, it's definitely, there are times, especially when, so for example, I host these monthly workshops. And when there's a workshop on a topic that I don't personally know a lot about because I am conscious. So the trance is not like, I'm still present. It's still Randy in the room. Um, and so the more relaxed I am and the more I can trust what's going to come out of my mouth, the easier it is. Otherwise I get super sweaty. Otherwise Verla has to say over and over, give us a moment (laughs) because Verla is waiting for me to calm down for me to trust the process, but that's everything in life, right? Like the more you trust, the more you feel, the more you can surrender to a certain flow, the easier it is. And so that's, it's really, it comes and goes when, when Verla's kind of on a topic that I've heard over and over again, Verla can go. And it's interesting. We, we speak really quickly too. We can speak very quickly. So the other thing also is, is just noticing that when there are, there's someone in the room or even someone who's going to watch the video, it's interesting. We kind of tune into the future viewers as well. So there might be like, more information knowing that that future viewer viewer is going to access it and sometimes we go way back like especially working with private sessions and private clients we have to kind of scale it and I can feel that scaling back and scaling back scaling down if you will not not to lower the information but to make it more accessible if that makes sense so there's a whole range when I'm channeling where I realize this is really about an alignment to who's who we're talking to and if I can let my ego just step aside and let that um, be enough, then that's interesting. And then you mentioned that Verla is like maybe like a like an ancient like Anunnaki. Do you know anything more about that, or like what do you? What not do you not remember? Verla. So Verla is me, um, but the Anunnaki is who I first started channeling. Oh, so, um, yeah. The first guides that I interacted with w- from the pendulum. So they had different names, um, similar messages around awakening um and then since then i've kind of studied more and realized that you know this could be pleiadian influence this could be different camps from the galactic family and verla is from the uh, so verla is my soul that hails from another universe so that's um, it's been really fascinating to learn about the galactic history as i've gone on and go oh well maybe my guides from the very beginning and i also very much believe and feel and live through these alternate realities. So I often will tune into the Randy who kept channeling with them, you know, who didn't take a break from them. And she's much more in the, um, I don't know, um, let's say galactic kind of vein, if you will. And Verla's, Verla's, Verla's kind of looking at our universe from an outsider perspective. So Verla talks more about duality and integration and um, the big, the big kind of trends versus maybe something that's more galactic focused. If that makes sense. No. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So we, we, we should get into it. Like what, um, yeah. but wait, let's, let's back up. Like, so you feel like, like, I know you do yoga and you you have mm-hmm. a yoga practice and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. do you feel like the yoga is what opened you up and like, then what kind of yoga do you practice? Cause I've done like Kundalini yoga, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know a lot about, you know, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'd love to learn more, you know? Yeah. So I'm trained in a, in a kind of postmodern blend of yoga. It's called yoga inbound, but basically it's the way I, the way I practice the way I teach, I take a little from everything. It's kind of like this postmodern world that we live in, right? Just like take from a lot of different styles. Kundalini, I have done some Kundalini. 
um, which are really Kriya based, right? So mine's a little bit more of a flow. It's interesting because I've started infusing my yoga with a channel practice, which I call light alignment. So it's a little bit more holding ge geometries and geometric forms and doing a lot more toning and chanting and humming. So I've noticed that, uh, especially the past couple of years, like using hum, using vibration has helped open me a lot as well. So I've, I think you can't go wrong with whatever style really resonates with you. But what I would recommend is working a little bit more with vibration in the voice, which always deepens me into, because I get really high. I get really naturally high <laughs> when I'm doing my yoga practice. And when I add in, when I just kind of do whatever, and then I start to feel, it's almost like uh, the Eastern practices, Qigong, Tai Chi. I start to feel, you know, in yoga, we call it prana or chi. I start to feel that flow and, and, and the chakras start to line up as well. So I would say it doesn't matter so much what style you're doing when you follow your own sense of where the energy is moving, if that comes to you. And then I highly recommend utilizing voice or sound. Um, a lot of release work can be helpful too. Like I do a lot of lion's breath, <laughs> that sort of thing um, yeah. when I feel prompted. So it's also a very intuitive practice too. And when I'm teaching a class, same as when I'm channeling, I kind of get a read on where everybody's at and what we need. Do we, are we honoring maybe the new moon? So maybe there's something about being quieter and going within or the full moon where we need to be brighter, more expressive, or is it, you know, I kind of tune in a little bit to the astrology and astronomy and whatever's going on. So I, I was wondering if I could ask you something about me personally. I was just thought about, yeah. this yeah. like you know, a lot. So like, I, I've been like, I don't know what, okay. So I, I went through a breakup like a year and a half ago. And, and then uh, after the breakup, like three months after, like I started feeling like pain and like, my, like under my right side of my ribs, like my mm -hmm. liver area. And I went and got, mm -hmm. I didn't want to go through mainstream medical. I, I'm not really a big fan of mainstream medical, but like right. I still went cause I was a little scared. I was like, well, what if this is something serious, you know? And my fans know this. I talk about this all the time because it's been an ongoing problem. But good. so they, they good did. that you share it. Not good that you have it. Good that you share it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 um, so it was pain. And then they did all kinds of tests. They did like CT scans. They did cameras over the organs and all that stuff, mm -hmm. even though I didn't want all that radiation, but still I thought maybe better, better safe than sorry, because my dad, sure. my dad had cancer when he was like mm -hmm. 51. Right. So like mm -hmm. I'm 44 right now. So mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. like, you know, okay. So yeah. then, so all the tests came back ne negative, like nothing. They didn't find anything. So then I have a lot of friends who are energy healers and people who study meridians and stuff like that. And they said, maybe you could have um, energy like stuck in your meridian. That's why I was asking you about the yoga and stuff, because, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't really done, I haven't really done any Qigong or anything. I probably should. But then what happened was I, I started working out again. I started getting in better shape. Like I just lost 30 pounds because after the breakup, I got really depressed. So like re re most recently I lost 30 pounds and I've been running every day and, and, and it seemed like the pain went away, but then like the last few days it, it came back. So mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's like mm -hmm. stored anger, like do, what, mm -hmm. what resonates with you? Because mm -hmm. I know you're can like I, really- Can I walk you through a little exercise, Robert? Yeah. yeah. So, so close your eyes, take a big deep breath. Sigh out the exhale. Good. Take two more like that. And if you guys are watching the video, like go ahead and join us. And just be in your body. It's always helpful for me to imagine like roots down into the heart of Mother Earth through your feet. So one more with that rooted connection and big sigh on the exhale. And then establish what your body's yes is. So for some people, it's a nod, it's a smile, it's a leaning forward. What is your yes? Like a nod, maybe? Nod? Great. Yeah. What's your no? Yeah, great. Awesome. That's always the easiest <laughs> when people have a nod or a shake. Okay, another big deep breath, getting out of your mind into the body because the body knows the body knows exactly what it is okay so i'm just going to ask you a question about this this energy is this sensation we'll just call it a sensation rather than pain is this sensation connected to the breakup and just see if you feel the nod or the shake i would say yes yeah is it um 
Is it something that you're needing to do deeper emotional work around, such as anger? Nobody's told me yes. Yeah. Is the working out and the running, is that helping to move energy so the so that sensation is subsiding? I would say yes. But so in other words, there is a level to work with that anger and the emotional work before it clears. Yes, because yeah, I, I there just, you go. <laughs> I feel like also like, I feel like what's weird is I, I feel like I I get easily triggered too for, mm -hmm. for I, I don't understand it. Like I, I'll be fine. And then I'll get like triggered for like no reason. I'm like, why? I mean, you know, and I'm like, trust me, I'm like the nicest person in the world. I have the, I, I mean, I'm not giving myself credit, but I, I, I'm always usually really cordial to everybody. And I like to be, I like to be a good person, but then mm -hmm. I find myself getting triggered and I'm like, what is going on? Like, I, I mean, like, I, does it tend know, to be and, trigger through anger? I, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, and it's weird. Like I meet other women too, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's not like I haven't moved on, but it's mm -hmm. like something about this last breakup. I think it was because she was like my twin flame and, 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 and I like felt like I waited my whole life to meet her. And then she it started, it yeah. went, it started like really great. And then it just, it just yeah. fell apart. And it went, when it, when it ended, it ended bad. And then it left me in like shambles, you know, and I'm still like, I guess I, I guess I'm still recovering from that. that that's yeah. what my body's telling me, even though I don't want to admit it because it's been like a year and a half and people would probably say, you got to move on. And I have moved on, but it's at the same time, I don't think my healing part has moved, moved on. I don't know. Like I felt I, like, that, <laughs> I felt like I was going to have a family with this woman. You know yeah. what I mean? I felt like we sure. were going to like be together for the rest of our lives. That's, that's what it felt like, you know? So when she, yeah. when I lost her, it felt like I was losing, like, I don't know, like a, like a, like a potential timeline. If that yeah. makes any sense, like a timeline that I thought that was going to work out for the best. I totally lost that whole timeline. Mm -hmm. if that makes any well, sense. Well, that's the thing is it's so fascinating to me. So uh, of what the body stores and it, you could even think about it as an extension of our field or our energy body. And in, in yoga, we call it sukshma sharira, the, the um, subtle body. And this, what it sounds like is there's something still attached to that relationship. And it could also be around the negative emotions. Like you say, you're a nice person. It could be repressed energy. It could be a past life that you've had with this person where you're, you had this opportunity to clear it again in this life. And there's just not something quite right with that. It could be an alternate energy. I, because this is my first life. And I, whenever I do past life regressions, I borrow other lives. It's pretty quiet. It's pretty wild. <laughs> Because what do you uh, mean? I'm, I'm so operated. interested. That sounds so interesting. Right. I know. Borrowing other lives because my from where I come from and I'm and I'm seeing and feeling this with a lot of people now, there's more of a collective. So the more I do my personal work, the more I realize, oh, and it's always going to benefit me. But I'm starting to do work more on a collective level because and I didn't come with as much baggage, if you will. Well, can I ask you a question? Do you feel like you're a walk-in? Is that what you're saying? Or are you, are you like... So we, you could say that, but I'm a born-in. <laughs> so, so I've always been Randy, but this is my first, this is my soul's first human life. And so it's a, it's a fascinating thing. And that shocked me a little. It, it didn't shock me. It made sense. It, it resonated with me when I, when I learned this, when I was ready to learn this. Um, but the interesting thing that that I feel more is um, like, for example, Robert, we could go into your past life and there will be something if you had a past life and we have a lot something pinging there that I would go. Right. This is also for me as a soul to learn and understand and connect to. So I don't feel disconnected from anybody. I don't feel like, oh, well, you have all that baggage. That's not for me because I don't have baggage. If anything, it's more like I feel um, way more, I, I feel expanded in, in not just my soul's growth, but the world's growth, but the collective's growth. That's what really turns me on a little bit more of, of just finding familiarity, um, in, in other people's adventures and other people's stories. That's interesting. And it's a lot like empathy, you know, and there's a lot of us that are really empathic. There's a lot of us that are, um, finding so for me it almost feels like it's, that's why i keep saying multi-dimensional it's the best way to describe it it's not just just one dimension of my life my soul my past lives but more especially when you open it up to future timelines when i start to feel like you said timeline you drop that timeline 
um, that there's, that there's, so I feel, I tend to go to alternate timelines before I, before I think this is a past life, because I don't have them. So it's more of a, oh, what in that alternate? So for example, I've had um, strange pains and strange fears around an alternate who died in a car accident. And that, and that, so once I realized it was, and there were so many emotional things that, that were happening there, so many grieving aspects, so many things from my family, that once I could connect to that, I went, oh, and for me, it's not just like, that's too bad for her, but there's this give and, and take. So there's a reason why I'm feeling her experience because she has a gift to give to me and I have a gift to give to her. See what I mean? So it's it's almost like living many, many lives with one big giant experience. And I, I feel like that's happening more and more to a lot of us that, so it's multi-dimensions. It's, it's many futures forward. It's many paths back and, and, and out sideways, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so would you, would you recommend in my situation that I try yoga? Because you know what, when I, 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 I have to admit, I, I haven't been meditating a lot. I have to more. And when I just went into that relaxed state, it felt good to like, to just sit and get oxygen in the body, you know, like to like sit and like, to like breathe in that oxygen and then like, you know, and let it exhale mm -hmm. it out. And like, that just felt like, like I should be doing that more. You know, Absolutely. I don't know why you I don't know like, it. yeah. <laughs> exactly you and know so, why because like there's you know like i always get so caught up in like i do so many podcasts and i'm always mm -hmm. like working so much mm -hmm. that it's like i would like well, you make time to work out and then the rest of the time i'm working on my show and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's like i have mm -hmm. to make time to meditate i guess or or do yoga or something because like, yeah. i feel like that'll that'll help me release that those will energetic. absolutely open you up and i feel like we're all equipped you're equipped to be able to get to the bottom of that as healers, you know, we're here to help people and guide people to that. But you know, like, especially when you can establish that communication system. And just like I said before, I can channel Verla way easier when I'm in that flow. So in other words, when I remove the doubts and I, and I trust this, right. The body will guide you through. So you can, what I would say too, is to, to help you with that pain, if you feel it's connected to anger because your body has established that, right? It's an emotional uh, wall that when you feel these emotions come up, when you, if you can remember just to sit and breathe or stretch and breathe or whatever that is. So you don't even have to know like this whole yoga sequence that to, that is yoga. The breath and the opening is yoga. The definition of yoga is union with the universe. So it's just bringing more spirit in. So it, I, what I would do is wait for the emotional trigger and then go, is this an opportunity to heal the pain? Or if you notice the pain, go, whoa, and just pause and breathe and just come back to that, that talking to your own body and just see if, as far as it, as it takes you. And there are so many practices that I've been bringing into my own life, like the lion's breath, that, that feel very tribal. But I feel like, especially as Western, you know, white Americans, <laughs> yeah. we've, we've been trained to like, keep a lid on it, keep, stay, stay small. And so for me in the body, like your version of yoga might just be like, uh, uh, growling or roaring or expressing that anger, because especially if the anger wasn't able, if it shifted to depression, then it didn't get to move. And often whenever we take something that is shifted down and suppressed, then it buries itself somewhere as pain or illness or whatever it is. So yeah, because a lot of, a lot of times the, the energetic can manifest in the physical, right? Or it's most screaming into a pillow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what's is the lion's breath? That sounds interesting. <laughs> so you cross your eyes and you stick your tongue out, but it's a forceful exhale. And if you even want to growl with it, even better. So, so the idea is just, and it does so much for the, for the, um, uh, thyroid too. all these glands here, it helps the immune system on the regular, you but yeah, tongue out as far as you can. You want to do it with me, Robert? <laughs> I, I have my hands up. I didn't do how you do it. How, how do you do it? You so, just, you, so you I'll demo it one more. I'll break it down. So viewers, if you haven't learned lion's breath, I highly recommend it. And this is a yoga breath, even though I did live in New Zealand for some time. 
and and different Polynesian cultures, they when they do the haka, you know, they do this and with the, the it's their way of intimidating their opponent there when they went into war, you know, and they're amping themselves up, which is a perfect analogy for having when we have to amp ourselves up to either release anger or you're frustrated at something or oh my gosh, I'm going into the interview like lion's breath can be used across the spectrum, so. You got to cross your eyes, which some for some people are, is difficult, but for some people it's easy. And then you're just going to inhale. And I always recommend puffing out the chest on the inhale, like inhale from the belly, but puff out your chest. And then you're going to exhale, cross the eyes and tongue goes out as far as you can. And you basically like this. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? We'll do it together. <laughs> so inhale, puff so out your funny. chest. <laughs> yeah, you might spit on yourself. That's part of the process. <laughs> ready? <sighs> <laughs> Laughter is also very healing. So it is. Learning lion's breath. I was just working with a client actually, and we're working on lion's breath. So I like that. I like yeah. that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And know? when you do it in the privacy of your own home, or oh gosh, I, I have a thought about my ex, or whatever is the triggering, right? It could for the gambit of us, right? It could be anything, or you could be in traffic and you're frustrated. Like try lion's breath. Because it's it's bringing, because what we tend to do is like, oh, this person is too slow, I'm frustrated in, in traffic, say example, or here's a backup, or I can't fix my studio lights or whatever's going on, right? There's this, this blocked energy. So the lion's breath will just move in. And, and if anything, we'll probably end up giggling at ourselves, right? Which is already an opening of the energy and already a, a raising. <laughs> of yeah. Um, so I think... I always forget how I, I introduce, I introduced the people, but I thought Christy referred you to me. So are you going to be at that star seed mm -hmm. gathering on yeah. August 1st? Did you want to talk about that a little bit? Reunion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm super excited about it. I went two years ago um, and it just has such a family vibe. It has energy. So we're all, we'll call, I like to use the word woo woo. <laughs> we're all into magic. Um, and it's super, the, even just people who are attending the speakers, everybody is super passionate about the, about the evolution. For me, I like to say the evolution of our world into new earth, 5D, whatever you want to call that. So it's great. Even as a, there's so, there are so many of us presenting really inspiring things on offer. But one of the things I like to remind people of is just the conversations you have in between these events or just the, the hike that you take with to, to involve yourself more in the nature spirits is, is priceless. So it's, it's a, and for me, I I'm, I'm about to go do this. Actually, one of my therapy sessions is um, going out into the woods for five days at a time, going camping solo. And it's because it's four days. If you can do the whole four days, I highly recommend it because you, my, my friend actually said it's about four days when we start to rewild, like the brain waves start to change from what they are with the screen and our to-do list and things like that, or what we think are really important in life. And all of that starts to mellow. It becomes very Zen. And that's what happened to me at the last reunion too. It's just um, a real shift in, in what's really important and what we're really here to do and how, not even how, what we're here to be, but how we are already being, you know, how it's already enough. That's what my ego gets in the way of. Are you doing enough? Is this enough? Yes. Go to the Starseed reunion. You'll remember. <laughs> Yeah, I I know James Rink's gonna be there too. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he, I, he's been on my show a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a really interesting uh, panel. It looks like you know, yeah. and it's in it's in one of the best places. I feel like I feel like you guys are so lucky to be down in North Carolina. We are. You're right. I don't take it. I don't take it for granted ever. I used to come to the beaches down there. I used to come, mm -hmm. I used to surf. So like I used to go um, to like Wilmington area. If you know where mm -hmm. Wilmington is, I would go yeah, to like yeah. um, Wrightsville Beach and Topsail Beach, like, you know, down there. And I think there's one more, there's Carolina Beach, which is more nostalgic from what I remember. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like three beaches in that area. But are, yeah. are you near the coast? It's or funny you like because for us in the mountains, because in Asheville, we're in the mountains, it's actually quicker for us to drive to South Carolina beaches, like Myrtle Beach area or even Charleston is closer than if we were to drive all the way across the state to Wilmington and the Outer Banks. The Outer Banks are beautiful and yeah. they are North Carolina beaches. But because of where we are on the far western side of the state, um, it's even closer to go to South Carolina, which are incredible as well. But things start to get really tropical down there. 
I love Charleston. It's real nostalgic yeah. as well, too. It's My sister really just moved to Charleston. Hi, Jess, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, let me ask you, is there anything else you'd like to cover that we might have not went over before we finish mm -hmm. up for today or? I, I'd like to plug a retreat that I'm doing if this is the time or sure. should, this yeah. is the time. Cool. So I am offering, uh, an, an immersion. I call it an immersion, not just a retreat. So it's four weekends. And if you're local, a little easier, or if you want to take a whole a month off even better, but it's four weekends and it's in uh Terra Nova center, which is Cedar mountain. It's about an hour from Asheville. The nature spirits there are amazing. So we're going to be doing a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about, uh, yoga, breath work. Um, we're going to be doing some shamanic stuff too. So getting into those trance states, just using a drum beat, which is amazing, plus some plant, plant medicine ceremonies. Um, so a lot of ceremonial stuff, as well as some timeline shifting quantum stuff. So I like what I do because, well, of course I like what I do. We all like what we do, right? <laughs> But my stuff offers a range. My offerings are always arranged from like mama earth stuff, kind of ceremonial grounding stuff into the what we could call our more quas, um, quantum mechanics, cosmic timeline shifting stuff. So there's this whole range of like embodied into the doing what we can do simply with our mind and our intent is fascinating. So that that's going to be four weeks in September, the not Labor Day weekend, but the following four weekends. And it's called Leap Dive Immersion. And so I've got the, all that on my website. Wow. And and you want to tell your people your website before we before we go? Yeah, through? liminalyoga.com. So if you can go to liminalyoga.com slash portal. The portal is everything I do. And I also host morning meditations. So that's, those are free. If you can come eight to nine live, um, East Eastern time, then we're there doing all kinds of breath work, meditation stuff. Like I highly recommend if you're awake, Robert, <laughs> it's a way to practice some of these. When is it? Open. I'll come. I'll, I will try it. When, yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah. There's a zoom link. Um, I could send you the zoom link, Robert, but but essentially, if you're if you're available eight to nine, Monday through Friday, we're doing it. And we're we call it wormhole fun times. Like, again, it's this thing of getting into the body, getting into those trance states and then seeing where consciousness takes us. Tomorrow, we're going to connect to Maldek or the, you know, the asteroid belt formerly known as Maldek. But it's through a technique that I channeled through Verla. So we start to practice these things. Verla's offering all these things all the time. And it's a nice free way to, to tune in daily. Yeah, I'd like to have you back to do a, I, and I can message you about this. I would yeah. like to have you back to do a live show where we do a channeling and you could do like readings for the audience if you'd want to do that. You Absolutely, know? I'd be honored. Thank you, Robert. That'd be awesome. All right, well, thank you. And I'll send you a link when I post this. Perfect. Thank All you right. for watching. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you.